the history of this country. Many protests that weren't at the scale of this protest, but a lot more violent than this. But yet we've never seen any prime minister <laughs> refuse to dialogue, to speak to these frustrated Canadian citizens, Canadian taxpayers. On the contrary, instead of speaking to them, he spoke down to them. Will you also agree that it's the responsibility of the prime minister to be measured when you have frustrated mobs out in the streets who are not happy with their government, not to call them names, not to stoke the flames of division, as he seems to do on a regular basis. We've been around politics for a long time. I've been around politics for a long time. We've seen many prime ministers and governments <laughs> use wedge issues, but I've never in my life, in my 37 years of active politics, seen a prime minister double down, triple down, go to any limits rather than to calm the situation. At the end of the day, and I saw it in your speech today, we've seen the Prime Minister on a couple of occasions call protesters in this country, taxpayers, Canadian citizens, marchers with the swastika, defenders of Nazism. He's used those terms. He sat up in the House of Commons and he actually proclaimed to a child of Holocaust survivors, a member of parliament duly elected, that she's, a, that she's a defender of the swastika. He said that in the House of Commons, that she marches. You and the opposite benches who march with the swastikas. I'm allowed in debate, as you know, Senator, uh, down to make my, 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 my point. And I did get up on a question, and you're not the speaker last I checked. So the question here is very simple, government leader. It's very simple. Do you agree with Prime Minister Trudeau that any parliamentarian and anybody who took the time to listen to these protesters, to take their calls, to meet with them, that we're Nazis, we're supporters of the swastika? Is, is that a view you share, a view that the Prime Minister has expressed publicly and refuses to apologize for? Senator Gold. Well, thank you for your uh, comments and for the question. Uh, I did not say, and I'm not asserting, that. Uh, uh, anything of the sort. The fact is, and it is a matter of public record, that not only at the beginning of this protest in Ottawa, but in, indeed towards the, even uh, through the course of it, there were representations One by person. people with One. an expression there were, it is a matter of public record, if I, may, if I may continue, that at the beginning and even to the end, there were the display of signs that were intimidating, harassing, racist, ugly, and unacceptable. To your, to your question, I do not agree uh, with, your, with your characterizations of the Prime Minister's actions. Uh, I, I will not, I'm really trying hard, colleagues, to be factual and clear and not to get drawn in to what is clearly uh, an anger at the Prime Minister, a frustration with this government, and, 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 and legitimately uh, partisan uh, 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 rhetoric uh, from others. So I'm not going to talk about what it must feel like to a father uh, to, uh, to be looking at signs, and I won't repeat the ugliness of some of the signs, but calling for him or describing him, uh, uh, that's not my, what I want to say. I simply want to say that the Prime Minister uh, and the government took very seriously its obligations under the law, thought long and hard about whether or not this crisis could be managed without in invoking the Emergencies Act, consulted, reviewed, took advice from intelligence and police officers and reluctantly came to the decision that there was no other way to resolve this crisis. And with regard to your question about the tone or measured, actions speak louder than words, colleagues. The actions on the ground in Ottawa, the intimidation of healthcare workers, of people of color, of people wearing masks, the need to provide police protection for ordinary citizens of Canada is not a measured response to COVID-19 uh, restrictions or mandates. But the measures put in place on the ground, not in the abstract, but on the ground by the government of Canada to address this were measured, proportionate, and we saw this with our own eyes here in Ottawa. 
So to your questions, honorable colleague, no, I do not agree with your characterization of the Prime Minister's actions, and the Government of Canada stands uh, convinced that the measures that it, that it took reluctantly were necessary uh, to secure uh, the peace, order, and good government uh, of Canada. Senator Housakis. Senator Gold, I would appreciate it if you stop always belittling questions from the opposition as partisan. We have as much right to partisan questions as you have the right to partisan answers. That's what we do in Parliament. So can we cut this nonsense about what we do is more partisan and somehow what you do is God's work here? It has to stop at some point. There has to be some respect. Well, you, again, you made an inference that somehow my questions are partisan in tone, and you do that constantly. Well, your answers are partisan in tone, Senator Gold. Excuse me, but I'm entitled to that opinion. Furthermore, I'm also entitled to my opinion that these protesters have been, and every single time we've had protests in this country, you have a group of extremists that try to tag along. And this is what has happened particularly in this case. But again, for a prime minister to, 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 to smear everybody with one brush and call these protesters, millions across Canada, Nazis, which he did, and people who marched with swastikas, again, is categorically false. And I don't agree with your premise, because I took the time last week to walk up and down and speak to protesters. They went out of their way to be measured in their protest. But my next question, Senator Gold, has to do with your speech where you said uh, that the, war, the, the Measures Act uh, does it only affects these particular protesters, doesn't affect all other Canadians. Last I checked in the last two days, to get past military-style uh, checkpoints here in Ottawa, to get to my job here, I had to provide ID, and, to, and I had to provide proof of exclusion to the police. Who determines, who's given that list to the police and those checkpoints of who are, have the right to that exclusion to enter the downtown Ottawa area? And I remind everybody, the downtown Ottawa area includes Parliament Hill. And maybe it's gone absent the parliamentarians here, but this is the first time in the history of this country that the Parliament, uh, Parliament Hill of Canada has been closed to Canadian citizens. Exactly. Never before. Exactly. When Parliament was under attack a few years ago, under attack, where we had a violent attack, the speakers at the time refused to shut down Parliament Hill with all kinds of pressure from the RCMP. We said it's a fundamental right for Canadians. So don't say in your speech that the measures only affect the protesters. It affects every citizen. Anybody who wants to come to Parliament Hill today to speak to the parliamentarians about what's happening in the Ukraine or anywhere else in the country, they can't. So don't say in your speech it only affects the protesters. It affects each and every Canadian that wants to come here to protest on Parliament Hill. Sorry, to to Sorry Senator Hosakis. Uh, uh, this is for all senators who, who, who wish to ask questions. Uh, senators are obviously aware that you can only speak to this matter once. Mm -hmm. So when you're asking questions, please don't use that as a platform to get in a second or a third speech. Senator Gold. Of course they're important issues, and, and, it, and, and that's why we're debating them. And just for the record, I did not say you didn't have the right to be partisan in your questions. I said that it was challenging to respond to serious questions on serious matters. May I, may, I, uh, may I continue? I said what I said in my speech and I stand by what I said. Of course, the fact that, we, that the police uh, have had to uh, continue to, to, for the time being, uh, to uh, set up checkpoints are clearly designed to make sure that those who haven't expressed their intention to return when they can, as I quoted in my speech, are not able to. And yes, of course, having to show ID, as I did this morning, walking from my apartment in center town to here, uh, is an inconvenience, so I am affected. This is a proportional uh, uh, and, and an acceptable limit on my otherwise ability to continue to walk with my hands in my pockets. As compared, well, and may I, if I may finish the sentence and then I will continue my answer. Uh, uh, as compared to the uh, impossibility of residents of center town, however old, young, single, or with families, to leave their houses out of fear of being assaulted, harassed, intimidated, 
and uh, slurred um, by those on the, occupying the streets. There was one last point that you, you uh, I might a ask you to, to, to interrupt me so that I can, I can answer that last question, Senator Hussack, if there was some last, last point, but if it comes to me, I, 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 I will say it uh, after. Senator Patterson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, Senator Gold, um, my question 